doll collectors, hobbyist fabsome besties, in our Barbie core room, featuring items from Azusa Barbie, I went kind of fast on the room build because we were making a quick backdrop. But there were some things that I wanted to do that I didn't get to. So today, that's what we're gonna do. Originally, I wanted to use these Barbie couches. They're inexpensive, they're still sold in stores, and I have quite a few. I even have a longer one from a Barbie dream house. But they're a little on the short side and they're plastic. And I want mine to be covered in fabric. I do like how narrow they are. It'll take up less space in the dollhouse. And I might even be able to fit a small side table in here. So I quickly got to work making a pattern, grabbed some test fabric, and made a slip cover. This is not the print I planned on using in the room. I just wanted to test it out first before I used my Barbie fabric or some other fabric. But it kind of works. It's just a little on the baggy side. But it does create a little traction so my doll's not slipping off the couch. I think the arms are a little long and it's definitely too loose. So let's alter the pattern and try again. Attempt number two. I haven't hemmed the bottom yet, but let's just see if this fits. Um, it's a little, it's a little tight getting on. Uh, it's definitely a better shape, but it is a little tight at the bottom because it narrows. So let's try opening it up a little bit at the bottom to make it easier to get on. Attempt number three. It's definitely easier to get on. It's a little baggy again. And I'm not loving the bottom. Ah, we're having a Goldilocks situation here. I'm altering the pattern to taper the bottom again, just a little. I think we're really close and this one might work. Since this couch love seat comes in two sizes, I made the pattern have options for both. This pattern is for the back rest. Now, if you're making it for the love seat, we just cut out the whole thing. But if we are making it for the sofa, we have to fold on this line here, which should be about half the size of the couch. And then we're gonna place this on a fold so it'll end up being a lot longer. This one is for the seat. It also has a fold for the love seat. This is the inside arm. We'll need to cut two. This is the side arm. We will also need two. Then this one is for the back. And here we have a fold for the love seat as well. This pattern has five pieces and they are numbered in the order that I sew them. So we'll take one and sew one to two and then we'll sew on three. Then we sew on four and then we finish with five. That's the plan. I picked up a pink fabric. It has a little stretch one way and no stretch the other. Let's pin down the pattern and I wanna make sure that my stretch is to the sides, pin everything down, placing the items that need to be on the fold, on the fold, cut them out, and I'm leaving a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Take pattern one, which is the backrest, and pattern two, which is the seat, line them up, and then take the back, and we're gonna flip it over and make sure it's right with that edge. Use pins to hold them in place and sew along the top edge with a sewing machine or needle and thread. Connecting the two pieces. Take the side arm or pattern three. We should have two pieces. They should be mirror images. The hard corner should hopefully match up with this seam. So I'm gonna take it and lay it good side to good side. Pin it in place going all the way down from the back to the seat. All right, we got around that little corner there. It's totally not perfect. Just keep in mind that I'm figuring this out as I go. Sew along the edge to attach it. Repeat for the other side. Now we need pattern four for the outside arm. We should have two of those and we're going to match the curved side up 
starting at the top corner. And then we're just gonna have to bend this to follow the shape. So we can sew it down. And I am noticing my pattern is off just a little, so make adjustments as needed. After sewing both sides, let's lay it on the chair and see how we're doing. Okay, not too bad. Take pattern number five. Let's flip this so the fuzzy side is on the inside. Then take our pattern and pin it going all the way around the edge. Along the side, across the top, and down. The bottom should be left open. So along the edge, let's flip it inside out and place it on the chair. And it's not too bad, but it's still a little baggy. So if you want it to fit a little tighter, you can just reduce the seam allowance. I've removed it from the chair and I'm just gonna take in those front and bottom corners a little bit and just sew at an angle. If you're looking at the chair, I'm gonna take this corner right here and kind of just bring it in. Can you see that? This was the original stitch right here and I just took it in a little bit. And I'll leave that up to you. I'm not gonna alter the pattern because if you're using a material that doesn't stretch, It'll be difficult to get it on the chair if you make it too tight around the bottom. Yeah, I like that. It tapers it in just a little. I remove it from the Barbie furniture, and then we're gonna just fold over and hem those edges. I did a zigzag first, and then a straight stitch. The larger one was made the same way, and now we have slip covers for our plastic Barbie couches. With the pattern, we can easily make different ones. So when we want to give our rooms a makeover, we can just make another slipcover in a different color. I'm making a slipcover out of felt and let's place it underneath. So we're gonna put it right on top of the couch or the sofa. Oh wow, the felt's a pretty good fit. Probably because it's a stiffer fabric. <laughs> wow, that looks so much neater. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and put our bright pink one over it and I'm hoping that this will just give us a little extra cushion and help fill out the slipcover. Yay! I think that looks a lot better. I found all of this Barbie fabric on Amazon. I'm using a sticky note as a pattern and we're gonna just place it on the fabric and cut it out. Cut two then lay them good side to good side. Sew around the edge, leaving an opening. Let's cut the corners, then flip it inside out. Add stuffing or fluff. Sew the opening closed to make little pillows to throw on the sofa or chair. Let's cut a piece of foam board. This one is three and a half by, uh, about five and a half inches. I cut two inch pieces to fit the sides. Glue them on to make a box. Trace the sides onto a piece of paper. Cut them out. Cut them out of fabric, leaving a seam allowance. Let's take the two shorter sides and line them up on the edge and sew a straight line. Once the three pieces have been connected, take the longer sides and we're gonna just match it up with those edges, pin it in place, sew along the edge and flip it inside out. Place felt on the box, then the cover to make a matching ottoman that we can also use as a coffee table. Or we can turn it to the side and turn our sofa into a sectional. What if we made a larger box? And on the inside, let's add a few shelves to make a shelving unit. Let's make one of our slip covers so we can turn the bookcase into an extension for the couch. I cut a piece of felt to go all the way across, cut two pieces of fabric the same size, lay them good side to good side, place the felt on top and sew around the edge, leaving an opening so we can turn it inside out. Sew the opening closed to make a mattress. Make pillows and a blanket to turn the sofa into a bed. 
I move the bed or the couch over to the wall so we can add this little table on the side. As a result, I'm changing the art around just a little. And I'm bringing in some of the art from our Valentine's Day room to make a gallery wall and bring in the cute little hearts from the Azusa Barbie lamp. I bought this bar stool on Amazon. There were two in the set. One was white and one was black, giving us another seating area in the kitchen. We can bring back in our table and chair set or add our chair. And I'm finding that it doesn't always wanna lay down in this back corner here. So I'm adding a little double-sided tape between the layers to keep it in place. Add our little ottoman and a throw pillow giving us a kitchen with an eating area, a seating area, and a bed. And if we want to change things up a little, remove the bedding, remove the slipcover from the bookcase, add the books from the sorority house to merchandise the shelves, place the ottoman on the side of the couch, bring back the pillows and the table and chair for a different look. I am loving the slip covers because we don't have to commit to a color or fabric. We can change them up with our mood. I made a gray slip cover using a fabric that didn't have any stretch and I'm glad to see that it still worked. And for me, they're a lot easier to store than another couch. Caroline, welcome to your new home. Oh my goodness, it's so pink. Thank you for joining us while we made slip covers for our doll couches so we can give our plastic Barbie furniture a comfy new look. I will make our pattern available on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at myfroggystuff, the frog vlog, and Bella of myfroggystuff. And we will see you next time.